the side-scroller, a genre that's recently started a resurgence. With games like Limbo and Inside, we're seeing a breath of fresh air in an otherwise abandoned style of gaming. They're games that tend to be beautiful, well-crafted worlds and tight, fun gameplay with fair challenge. And then, Yacht Club Games made a game called Shovel Knight. With retro-looking graphics, reminiscent of old-school gaming, it was a true side-scrolling classic and was a true 10 out of 10 for me. Playing this gave me a taste for one of the granddaddies of the genre, one of the trendsetters from the NES. My name is Ian, and today, we're looking at Mega Man 2. Our story begins with our hero Mega Man enjoying the short-lived peace from the previous game. When surprise, surprise, Dr. Wily, back with eight robot masters and an army of mechanical soldiers, wants to defeat Mega Man. So, Dr. Light, Mega Man's creator and seasonal shopping centre Santa, sends Mega Man to take down Wily once again. The story is quite simple, but it's enough to drive you forward in the game. Let me walk you through the controls. They're a bit tricky, but stick with me on this. You can jump, and you shoot. That's it. And you know what? That's all you need in this game. The games built around this to still offer a fair and consistent challenge. Jumping puzzles, side-scrolling movement, enemy encounters, all can be taken on with these tight controls. It follows the old adage of easy to learn, but a lifetime to master. These older NES games needed tight controls. They were usually as hard as nails to increase the longevity of the game. Plus, you had a controller with two buttons, so overcomplicated move sets weren't on the table. But simplicity doesn't detract anything from the game. It's still a really fun adventure that you can pick up and play at any time without a steep initial learning curve. The game was released in 1988, and it's still being bought and played today. So that says it all, it's a solid, fun experience. The visuals in this game are timeless, boasting strong use of colour, maximising the capabilities of the NES at the time. Even the colour scheme of Mega Man himself is due to the NES's usable colours, as the console had more usable blues in the palette, so it gave him the most detailed sprite. The main staple of the Mega Man series are the bosses, the Robot Masters. These powerhouses are at the end of each stage, and must be defeated to advance. We have Metal Man who throws razor sharp discs, Wood Man who creates a shield of leaves and launches it as a weapon, Air Man uses mini tornadoes, Flash Man can freeze time, Quick Man can throw boomerangs, Crash Man throws bombs, Heat Man throws pillars of fire, and finally the ultimate robot master, Bubble Man, who can throw bubbles. These robots were designed with the hope of defeating Mega Man, each with their own special abilities and fighting styles. They are a fun and exciting challenge to the end of each level. They are the cherry on top for this adventure. Each design is iconic and perfectly encapsulates the challenge of the game. And with challenge comes reward. After you defeat a robot master, you gain their ability. I like this in games. Challenge and reward. After each boss you become stronger, and are able to take on more bosses. The ability system in this game works a lot like rock, paper, scissors. Once you gain a new weapon, this will do more damage to someone else. So, there is an efficient way to go through the levels, to have the best equipment available to take your opponents down with ease. Something I love about each level is the variety. Each is themed on the robot master on the stage giving you different obstacles, slowly ramping up the difficulty to test your skills. Metal Man's stage is based in a factory, so there are lots of conveyor belts and industrial crushers for you to navigate. Woodman's stage is set in a forest and has you dodging wild animals and heat-seeking budges. Airman's stage is located in the clouds, which has you dodging flying enemies and pitfalls. You don't feel like you're repeating the same level. Each gives you a unique feeling. And with that, it gives you a feeling of accomplishment, knowing you conquered something different each time. Even the Wily stages later in the game are all set inside the same fortress, and it still accomplishes a variety that doesn't let it get boring. 
The nest had limitations. You can only have so many objects on screen, so many colours and sound capabilities. And even with this, it has an amazing soundtrack with songs that will stay with you for hours after you've finished playing. With a game where you can only go from left to right, the music is a driving force to push you on. It gets you pumped. Everything from the boss music to the wily stages. The music is masterfully crafted to the point where you may even listen to some tracks on their own. It's a big piece in the world building of this game. Each track feels connected to the stage it's in. From the drums in Woodman stage complementing the almost rainforest look, to Metal Man's techno beats enhancing the feeling of the machines and the factories in the background. When the eight robot masters have been defeated, the wily levels begin. You now have to assault this giant skull fortress to end things once and for all. The levels and the bosses for these final stages use everything you've learned and acquired so far and push it to the max, giving you the ultimate challenge for the final levels. You'll have to use certain weapons and certain abilities to get through these stages, but they do give a large margin for error. You can farm certain enemies to refill anything that's run out, stopping you from running into a dead end. A little tip, at the start of the first Wily stage you can farm the birds for extra lives. It's easily done when you use Woodman's shield. The first boss for these stages is Mecha Dragon, where you need to balance dodging attacks and avoiding pitfalls to actually dealing damage, which is more restricting than the standard boss. Knowing you can die without even taking damage adds a stress level that can get to you. And it definitely got to me. I think I died on this boss more than any others, even the final one. Next being Pico Pico Kun, a robot that comes out in the walls in two halves, fuses together and starts its attack. It's a tricky boss as one of the best weapons against him is Bubble, and you need to get up close and personal with it, meaning you can sometimes just take damage from Pico Pico moving. So keep moving when he's formed, and then stick to the middle so you don't get hit by his new body reforming. Guts Dozer is huge and hits hard. The best thing to do with him is to have full health and shoot him non-stop with your standard weapon. It's a brawl and hopefully you'll come out on top. The next would take a lot of trial and error if you didn't know going into it what to do. Boo Beam Trap can only be beaten using Crash Man's weapon, Crash Bombs. You only have a certain number of shots and if you use them up that's it. You need to die, grind for more Crash Bombs and try again. A good strategy is to blast away all the walls and then to die. And when you re-enter, you can go straight for the traps, making it a little bit easier. You can do it in one run, but I lack the skill. Now when these Goliaths have been taken down, you have a new challenge. You have to beat all eight of the Robot Masters again. This sounds worse than it actually is. You now have all their weaknesses, meaning they drop rather quickly, including Metal Man whose weakness is his own ability. He drops in one hit. Wily is the final boss, and I hope you save those E-Tanks throughout, as he's quite a challenge and unless your skills are godlike, you're going to take a beating. Hit him with everything you have, but save Bubble for his final form. I find the boss is one of the most exciting parts of the game. The designs, the music, the feeling of entering one of their arenas, they are truly iconic. And it's a theme that has continued in each subsequent Mega Man going forward. If the formula ain't broke, why fix it? These old NES games are not impossible, they just take a bit of willpower to get past some of the grittier parts. I would class this as a challenge, it has some maddening parts and I'll admit I lost my patience on more than a few select bits, but it's down to my own skill that I died. This game is definitely worth playing, it's a simple and fun experience, and you don't need to dig out your old NES to play it. There was recently a release of the Mega Man Legacy for all consoles, meaning you can play this in its crisp 8-bit glory. It's not a long game, but it will stay with you for a long time. The excellent soundtrack, the theming in the levels, and the feeling of accomplishment when you finally conquer this game. It's why I recommend today 
that this game should be placed on your to-do list. It's an experience and example that a game doesn't need next-gen graphics and gimmicks to be a memorable and fantastic game to play.